What I like doing about the lower control arm is it's a lot easier to replace than the upper control arm. What's up guys, my name is Andy. In this video, I'm gonna be replacing the worn out and tired lower control arm on my 66 Mustang with a new unit. I just got done replacing the upper control arms. Now I need to get the bottom ones done so I can finish this whole steering upgrade that I'm doing on my car. Normally we would head over to the bench and take a look at the parts that you're gonna install, but this is it. Really, you know, you just order a pair of these and you can put them on your car and it comes with everything attached to it that we need. It comes with the cotter pin for the castle nut. The castle nut's already on here. And then we've got this protector over the, the boot of the ball joints. So we'll just take that off before we install it. And then everything else is already on the car uh, that, we, <laughs> that we needed to install. So really from here, we can just jump right into it. So let's get started. All right guys, as always, make sure you get your car safely up on jack stands so the car doesn't fall on you. And so the parts that we're gonna go after are this guy right here, this castle nut with the cotter pin in it. We gotta take these two bolts off here for the strut rod, gotta disconnect the sway bar uh, end link here, and then the bolt back there, the, the pivot bolt that's on the chassis. Uh, I went ahead and hit these with some WD-40 as I was getting everything set up. The bolt back there, the pivot bolt, and the one, the one here with the castle nut on it, because they might be a little rusty and corroded, might give you a little bit of headache. These ones shouldn't be too bad, and this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, but just squirt those with there before you get started and it'll make it easier. So the first thing I'm going to take apart again, I'm going to go after the sway bar first and then I'm going to go after these two bolts here on the strut rod and then we'll go from there. All right, now we got to get this cotter pin out. These ones can, sometimes they can kind of be a, a pickle to get out because they're all, you know, they've been put in here and they're sitting and they're rusted and they don't want to move. And then when you get them out, you end up breaking the legs off and you can't push the cotter pin out. So just a heads up, that might be difficult. Some of you guys are probably wondering, you know, Andy, you just put on those Mike Meyer mod control arms, upper control arms. Why aren't you doing the, the lower control arms to match it? And the answer is I actually, I'm going to. Uh, the, they're, they're being built. And it's going to take some time for them to get built and I need to replace these lower control arms because they're they're pretty shot and pretty worn out so and as cheap as these things are I think I paid like 150 bucks for the pair of these lower control arms um, and so you guys can you know replace them this is one of, one of those cheap and easy parts that I like to do but while I'm waiting for those uh, Mike Meyer lower control arms uh, I'm just going to put these other ones in and just get that going All right, guys, I'm having a hard time with that cotter pin, so we're just going to cheat, and we're just going to shear those edges off by... There we go. Just using the castle nut to just shear the, the ends of that cotter pin off. This thing's pretty rusty, so it's not surprising that it was going to give me some headache. All right, now that that nut's off there, we're going to use a pickle fork to separate the ball joint from the bottom of the steering knuckle. But we should also get underneath here and loosen the bolt for this pivot bolt back here uh, so that this thing can swing out of the way when we're done, when we're pounding this out of there. But you're also gonna have to take this lower cross member off. So we'll get that first because the bolt, when you go to remove it, it's gonna slide out and it'll hit this cross member. So let's get all that taken care of first and then we can separate this guy. This bolt, this is a, takes a three quarter inch socket and you're gonna have to hold the back side of it. Now this, this guy might be on here pretty good. Yeah, it's on there pretty good. I'm gonna have to get the breaker bar out and finish taking this guy off. I have to get a little creative here. What if we use the sway bar to hold the bolt? There we go. And now, or I guess it'd be the frame. Yeah, I have to do it that way. So I'm putting a wrench on the end of that 
and I'm letting it rest against the frame as I continue to turn this bolt and get it out of there. I wonder from here if I can get the impact back on there now. There we go. All right. Now, you guys might find that this bolt is stuck inside the bushing here. These things, they're kind of like the, the rear bolt on the rear leaf spreader, I guess it's the front bolt on the rear leafs. The, it, the bushing inside here can seize up on the bolt and you won't be able to knock the bolt out, take the bolt out. So if you do that, <laughs> you may have to get the saws all out and cut the bolt on either side of the bushing of the lower control arm. If you've got an impact, one of those air hammers, you might be able to hit the end of the bolt to knock it out. So this can be a problem. I don't know, we'll see how hard this is to get out of here, but so far so good. <laughs> Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we take that bolt out on the back side of the lower control arm, we need to separate this with a pickle fork first, then we can worry about taking this off the car. That took a couple good whacks to get that off of there. All right, yeah, this thing's destroyed, but I already knew that these things were shot anyways. Now we can worry about that bolt back there. All right, this bolt, yeah, it's, it's moving pretty easy. That's good. Again, sometimes this can seize up on you guys and it's gonna take a lot of extra effort to get that off of there. I think we might've got lucky with this one. All right. All right, guys, I was looking at the hardware here. This one doesn't look too bad. I bet we could salvage this, but I just don't wanna risk it. You know, I, I just went ahead and got new hardware. I went down to the hardware store and all I could get was this, uh, I wanted to get grade eight, but see how it's a longer bolt? That's okay, it's not gonna hurt anything. The important part is the, sh the shank here. The unthreaded section needs to be, you know, at least, you know, as close as you can here. This is a four inch, one half by 20 thread uh, bolt. That's, this is one half 20 uh, thread. But the, again, the important part is we wanna get the right shank length, the shank length. So I went ahead and got a new bolt and then a new uh, washer or lock washer and nut for it uh, just so we can put this back, put new hardware in here. You can buy the exact hardware that you're supposed to have for this. And then I don't know, it's gonna cost you like 15 bucks or something like that, 20 bucks, whatever. Uh, if you order online, go down the hardware store, you can get something very similar. It was less than $10 um, and I can have it now. Um, I didn't know I was gonna need this until we got in here. So for you guys, just a heads up, you may wanna replace this, either order it or head down to your hardware store and get something like this. So. All right, let's put it back in. So getting this new guy ready, again, just make sure you pull the cotter pin. It was on the tape underneath here, get that castle nut off, and then we need to, you have to just unthread this thing. It doesn't pull off easily. Get this cap off of the ball joint cover here, and then we could put this in the car. All right, and you're gonna wanna put the bolt, particularly if you got this new one, you're gonna wanna put it from the back, because if you put it the other way, it's likely that this bolt will hit that cross member, so. All right, again, the bolt's long, but that's okay. It's not gonna touch anything out here. The important part, again, is that shank length inside there so that it matches. So when you squeeze this thing down, you're still, everything's riding on that shank and not on the threads. And we're just gonna go ahead and just hand tight for now so we can pivot here and then we'll tighten it up at the end. Before we pivot this up into place, this is a pro tip. If you take like a, a punch and you put it in the cotter pin hole, you can turn the, the ball joint stud, just so that you can get the cotter pin, you know, in and in, in this way, instead of some funky angle where you can't get to it if you ever have to service it. And when you kind of line it up, I guess, with the holes in line with the car, it's easier to get to the, to the cotter pin that way. And you may not struggle with it next time. All right, let's go ahead and cinch that guy down. Now we just need to twist this thing so we can get those uh, cotter pin holes lined up with the castle edges. All right, I think that might do it. All right, that guy's locked in. 
Now we gotta connect the strut rod to the locator. You just kind of move things around; and it'll fall into place. All right, then we gotta get the linkage for the sway bar in place. All right, so the last thing that to do is to tighten that bolt, the pivot bolt back there on the other end of the lower control arm. You might find it's easier to tighten that once you set the, gar the car on the ground because it might bind a little bit. I, I, it's up to you. I think I'm gonna just go ahead and tighten it and see what happens, but just a heads up on that. All right, cool guys, this whole side is done and installed. Uh, let's head over to the driver's side real quick and get that one done. All right, we got the driver's side done now and it was really just as straightforward as the other side except for I did have a problem with that bolt just like I thought I would. So I went ahead and replaced it. Uh, this is the one that came out of it. I don't know if it's hard to tell, but look at that. It's, see how it's got wear marks on here. This thing, even the bolt's bent, which is kind of hard to see in the camera, but I had to beat this thing up to get it out of there and it was frozen inside the, the, uh, the bushing back there just like I was talking about. So. I didn't, I didn't have any problems on the passenger side, but the driver's side was a pain in the butt to get off and it was just rusted in there and caused a lot of problems. So anyways, I got new hardware in there, so we're good to go. Uh, another thing too, it wouldn't hurt guys to put your, uh, put some, get a, one of those Greek, uh, grease guns and hit up these grease circ fittings with, uh, with some grease before you put everything on the ground. But other than that, uh, we're good to go. Success, another success. <laughs> More parts installed and it worked. I just went around the block real quick just, just to make sure that everything's functioning correctly. I probably should do a proper follow-up on more specifically those mod upper control arms that I just put on before this, but uh, ultimately I wanted to, to go out and just make sure that the car's working. Uh, the first thing I did notice though is I do need to get an alignment. Um, you know, putting those, those parts on there, you know, especially when I was in the upper control arm, I don't know if I got the shims perfect and and so I'm gonna take it to a shop and have them take care of that for me and dial it in. I did notice one of the things that, you, that I do like with that upper control arm, with that additional caster that, that's built into the part, that steering wheel goes back to center a lot easier. That's another thing that we want out of caster with these cars, uh, but I really need a chance to just take the car out and, and go for a good drive around the twisties and, and have some fun with it. But uh, I wanna get the alignment done first and then I can, I can dive into it, so. Anyways, but for the lower control arms, that's it guys. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, maybe Maybe get that bolt kit uh, before you, uh, when you order the, your, your lower control arms. Um, and that way, if you have any problems with it, and it's not it even a couple bucks, you can throw in some new bolts and you'll be good to go. But everything else just bolts right up and it's super easy. And uh, again, it was easier to do than the upper control arm. And also, um, you guys probably noticed on, on my setup, I have those coilovers so they're bolted to the upper control arm. And so the upper control arm doesn't soup, uh, droop as much. If you guys have the stock springs or something, just a spring and shock setup, you'll notice that that whole system may likely to droop further down, uh, but that's okay. It's not gonna get hurt anything. You can just leave the whole spring and shock and stuff. Just leave it alone. You don't have to take it apart to do the lower control arms, which is another reason why I like, you know, these lower control arms are just an easy upgrade and they're cheap. So anyways, all right, that's it. That takes care of that. All right, guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out. And we'll see you in the next one.